I was going to jump right into head sculpting, but I realized when I was doing head sculpting, because I kind of jumped ahead and just because I wanted to have some fun, I realized I actually went over masking and transposing already. So I'm going to add masking and transposing before we get into the final head sculpt. So the first thing we're going to do is masking. And let's go ahead and go all the way back to the beginning here. Or as near enough to it as we can. There we go. So we'll just start with this character, or this object, to talk about masking. So what is masking? So just like when you hold down the shift key, and that gives you a smooth modifier brush. So the standard brush over here changes to smooth whenever you have smooth uh, selected. And when you hold down shift, it's a smooth brush, which means you can smooth your mesh. As well as, if you hold down shift, you're going to see my Z intensity for standard brush is 35. When I hold down shift, my Z intensity drops up to uh, 100, and actually my focal shift changes as well. So the shift brush has its own properties. And in order to change those properties, you have to hold down shift and change them. So if I want to say, change the Z intensity down, I can hold down shift and drop that. So now every time I hold the shift key down, it will now be a, sh a Z intensity of 21. So now when I smooth, it'll be a very, very soft, gradual, just a, just a, you know, you have to really smooth a lot to get it to smooth hardly at all. Um, if I want to crank that back up, I got to hold down shift and then crank my Z intensity up to 100. And now I can smooth like I normally would with a smooth brush. Exact same thing with masking, only the mask hotkey, I guess, or the modifier key, is control. So you see when I hit control, it goes to mask pin. That is the default masking brush, is mask pin. So what is mask pin? Uh, by default, mask pin ha is just basically a mask brush that has two functions, and there's two different ways you can use it. The first way is just to hold down control, and then as you drag over your mesh, it's going to mask it out. So I'm really just masking and brushing onto my object. So I can mask, and let go, uh, just move, and then mask. So as I'm hovering over my object, I can pick up my cursor and just mask. And then, just like with the standard brush, if you hold down Alt, it has an invert function, where it digs into your mesh as opposed to pulling out. Uh, same thing with mask. If I hold down Control, and then I hold down Alt, you're going to see that plus sign next to the mask turns to a minus sign. So when I hit, hold down Control, it changes to a cursor that says mask, and it's a yellow cursor. And then I hold down Alt, it goes to a minus, and then I can go through here, and mask out certain areas. And mask pin is an interesting one in that it actually has another different way you can mask. So you can mask on your object by just dragging and dropping on your object. You can just like brush in masks on your object and then hold down alt and mask and brush. As well as if I go to the front of the object here, um, if you hold down control and drag out in the um, document here, it'll actually drag out a rectangle. Now, because I have X symmetry on, if I drag and drop, it will actually do masking across the uh, symmetry line, which is, of course, the X axis symmetry. And if I go to the front here and mask, it'll mask all the way through, which brings up something interesting. You can actually um, mask through an entire object. So let's talk about masking and hotkeys. I'm actually going to turn off diamond, uh, perspective over here just while I'm talking about masking. So if I hold down Control and drag, that'll actually clear your mask. If I have something masked and I control tap in my document, that'll invert my mask. And then if I control drag, it'll get rid of my mask. Uh, if I mask an object, tap, it'll invert. Tap again, it'll, um, it should invert again. And then, so you can just get, sit out here and tap to invert and then control drag to uh, get rid of it. And all of these hotkey things that I'm doing are actually over here in the masking menu. So here's my tool menu. I'm going to drag all the way down until I get to the masking sub menu, open that up. And you can see we have inverse, mask all, Clear, blur, sharpen, grow, and shrink. Uh, as well as some mask by feature stuff that we'll get into probably later. Um, if you hover over these, you're going to see they have like control A is mask all, clear mask, doesn't have a hotkey, inverse, control I. Um, I don't use those, but you know, feel free to use those um, for sure. Uh, but I'll show you the hot key. I don't know if it's a hot key. It's kind of like a hot gesture, I suppose. So, so we'll start from the beginning. So view mask is actually what you can do and it gets a little bit confusing is you can actually mask something and then you can turn off view mask and it's still masked you just can't view it so generally speaking you want view mask on if you mask something it'll actually uh, go ahead and pop on view mask by default uh, the first one is invert so you can hit control i or you can control tap out here and that'll invert the mask and then you can just continue to uh, add to that if you want to so control and then hold down control alt and you can do Something like that. Uh, clear is, uh, you can hit clear. Or if I control Z, I can control drag out here and that'll clear my mask. Uh, mask all is actually, if you have nothing masked, you can just control tap out here and that'll invert nothing into everything, if that makes sense. And then you can go in here and just control alt 
and then just make any shape that you're planning on making. Uh, blur mask is interesting. So if I'm masking in here and it's like, you know what, I like this mask, but it's a little bit harsh. Uh, I want to go ahead and blur it. What I can do is I can control tap and that'll blur my mask out as well as sharpen mask over here. You can hold down control alt and tap and that'll sharpen your mask up. So this actually actually comes in handy. So if you make a kind of a blurry mask here and then control alt, you can sharpen that up. I use that all the time when I'm breaking apart meshes and pieces and stuff. So like if I want to pop off a a specific part of my mesh, I'll go in here and just do a quick lazy kind of soft mask and then I'll hold down control alt and just tap and then sharpen that up and I'm good to go. And then of course I can go in here and oops. Clean up my mask if I want to you know, kind of fine tune my mask and then sharpen it up again. And again, I'm just holding down control alt and tapping in the white area. If I want to blur my mask, I can control tap on my object, but sometimes it'll leave a little mask mark over here, which you don't want. So generally speaking, uh, it's safest just to control tap inside of your mask area and then control alt tap outside of your mask area. And that'll kind of blur and sharpen. And you can actually use that to your advantage too. So like I was saying, uh, I'm going to go to the side view here. I'm going to hold down control and just drag out here to get a rectangle. And I'm going to drop that. And let's say, you know what, I like that rectangle, I just wish I had rounded edges. So you can control tap in here to blur, control alt tap out here to sharpen, and there you go. You got rounded edges, and uh, it's a mask. Now, another thing you may have noticed is when, I, when I'm just masking from the front like this, it just masks the object and nothing goes on in the back. However, if I control drag a, a selection rectangle, a mask rect, and I drag and drop it, it'll mask here, and it'll also mask all the way through the object. And this is pretty much universal. Um, we'll get into auto masking and backface masking and brush options, but that doesn't really change. Same thing from the side. You can go through here and it'll mask all the way through. And plus it's on X symmetry, so that is also why. As well as, you know, from the front. And you can use this to your advantage. So you can mask all the way through. If you don't like that, you can just control, drag, and then hold down Alt. And that'll change that from a mask additive with the plus sign to a mask subtractive. And actually, it keeps a plus sign there, but it's actually because it's white, you know it's going to subtract, and then it gets rid of that. So that's the basics. So the basics of mask pin, I should say, is mask pin or mask rectangle with mask pin available to you if you'd like. Uh, and then, of course, all the hotkeys. So mask, just draw on it. Control tap out here to invert it. Control drag to clear it. Mask. Uh, invert, oops, invert, blur, sharpen is control tap here on the blur on the mask part, control alt tap and an unmask part, and that'll just continue to blur and sharpen.